Glory to Jesus Christ. Slava Isusu Christu. It's a real pleasure to move on to part six of this um, multi-clip series of explanations of this book, The Divine Liturgy and Anthology for Worship, published by the Metropolitan Andrei Sheptyski Institute of Eastern Christian Studies. Today I want to uh, maybe, well, not so much recap some of the issues that we've gone over uh, as maybe uh, flesh out some of the details and some of the implications. Uh, so one of the things that I had mentioned before was that our uh, editorial board, uh, myself, uh, Joe Roll, uh, J. Michael Thompson, uh, Father uh, Roman Galadza, uh, Father John Sianchuk, what we wanted to do was provide a diversity in this book that would help the worshiper overcome a sense of routine. Now, all ritual requires a certain kind of quote-unquote routine. It's not really routine, it's a matter of stability so that you can enter into it. So you have to have a certain stability for people to be able to sing every Sunday. You can't be switching the music on them constantly. But on the other hand, if you don't have any change, what may happen is that every time they hear those notes, you know, glory be to the Father, you know, they're, um, they just kind of tune out uh, in terms of paying attention to the words because, you know, they, they just associate those words with a melody that really doesn't impact them uh, much anymore. In other words, doesn't make much of an impact on them. So um, what I want to do is uh, draw attention to the way in which this uh, diversity is presented uh, in this book. So um, if we can go to uh, page 100 in the anthology, and by the way, you'll see that um, if you have an anthology, you'll see that this page 100 is on the left side of the folding book. And then, of course, naturally, page 101 is on the right side. So you really don't get a good sense of what I'm talking about unless you're able to see page 100 and uh, page uh, 101, fas a fas, as, as they say. But let's just look at page 100 right now. So we've gotten to the, the first antiphon, and of course, there's the explanation that gives you uh, a sense of why that antiphon is there. Uh, not that this was planned by some liturgical committee, but you know it makes sense to, to imagine or to reflect on the fact that we have now gathered, so we praise the one uh, who has gathered us, the one who has brought us together, and what do we sing? Well, in a tradition that um, developed after the Synod of Review of 1891, it became very common, standard in fact, in Ukrainian Catholic and also, by the way, eventually Ruthenian Byzantine Catholic parishes to sing the antiphons, uh, the first antiphon of Easter Sunday almost every Sunday. That's something that wasn't happening until 1891. Until that time, what they were singing, or at least what was prescribed in, in all the books, was the Psalms of Typica, you know, bless the Lord, O my soul, and we'll get to that right away. But anyway, we've got this um, uh, antiphon, Psalm 65, in the Masoretic Hebrew text, uh, numbered uh, Psalm 66. Uh, Shout to the Lord all the earth, sing now to his name, give glory to his praise. Now, as I mentioned, on the other side, you, you have an, an alternate, which some of our parishes uh, sing uh, during fast periods. Now, there is no canonically established way to regulate this diversity. I mean, the closest thing we have to any kind of canonical regulation on this is actually the official uh, Vatican published books starting in 1940, which actually prescribed the Psalms of Typica for almost, you know, every divine liturgy of, of, of the year. Uh, but uh, those books didn't take into account a, a very healthy tradition that developed within uh, Western Ukraine, the one that I just mentioned, which actually harkens back to an earlier Constantinopolitan tradition of singing antiphons as opposed to the Psalms of Typica. So all of that was a, a, a kind of long historical footnote to the idea that it makes sense to sing either Shout to the Lord All the Earth, Psalm uh, 65, or 
a psalm of the Tipica, Psalm 102. And because one can sing the one or the other, I mean, I, I think it certainly does make sense not to sing uh, Shout the Lord All the Earth, which is the, the Easter antiphon on Sundays of Lent, and maybe other fast periods, but otherwise it certainly would be acceptable in keeping with the way in which the Ukrainian Catholic liturgical tradition developed. It would certainly be appropriate to sing it on many, many Sundays, but precisely because you want to avoid routine and you want to, by the way, benefit from the richness of the Ukrainian Byzantine tradition, you have facing on the other side, and I'm going to ask Janet to, to put up on the screen, um, page 101, where you have a psalm of the Tipica, Bless the Lord, O my soul. And so when you open the book, you immediately see, see that it's one or the other. Now, as I've mentioned on several occasions, the first couple of times people show up at the Divine Liturgy, they're, they're going to have trouble navigating this, but at least they don't have to run to another part of the book, right? It's, it's right there in front of you. They're either singing, Shout the Lord, All the Earth, or they're singing, Bless the Lord, O my soul. And of course, there are uh, really uh, fancy parishes where you, they might also decide to go over to page uh, 102 to, to sing another version of Bless the Lord, O My Soul. But certainly the text is there on, on page 101. Now, uh, having pointed out that you've got this um, uh, diversity that, or the, the, um, a, a, um, an instrument to facilitate diversity built into this book, let me then go back now to page 100, and Janet, I'm going to ask you to flash that up on, on the screen. Page 100, Shout to the Lord, All the Earth. And look how that, that page is, is, is set up there. Now, for starters, keep in mind that in order to get the English accentuation right, you have to sing, Shout to the Lord, All the Earth, not Shout to the Lord, All the Earth. What you end up doing then is accentuating the in an appropriate way. So we, we've taken care of that, okay? And then also, uh, through the prayers of the Mother of God, O Savior, save us. You don't want Mother of God. You want Mother of God, okay? Now, note also that um, we wanted to be able to provide note indications or stress indications even where there are not notes, in other words, where there's just text. And so um, at the back of the book, there's, there's a, a little appendix explaining um, these annotations, but they're, they're very simple. So if you go to the next verse, say unto God, how awesome are your works because of the greatness of your strength, your enemies will flatter you. So you have what looks like a whole note over awesome, and then a down mark works, indicates you go down there, and then you're going along straight, and then we'll flatter, so we'll flatter you. Okay, so the, the you, there's um, you know, an accent that indicates that, that you're supposed to go up on that. Now, uh, while we're still on page 100, let me uh, draw attention, and uh, Janet will flash up page 100 again for us. Um, you'll see that there is a gray text box. Now, there are people who feel that this is very confusing, it's a very busy page, and I understand that, but keep in mind a couple of things. It's too late three seconds before the first antiphon to say, oh, hold it, this Sunday, you know, the, today we're in church on Sunday, and it's the Feast of the Exaltation of the Cross. Uh, oh, oh, aren't there, um, aren't there variable antiphons today? And I'm going to look for them in the index or in the table of contents. You know, that, that leads to a situation where the cantor is confused and the confusion passes on to the people. And, of course, what happens then? The people are prevented from being able to pray calmly. So those indications are placed where they are needed. So you get that information about propers when you need the information. So, for example, uh, as it says here, the following feast days have proper antiphons found on the pages listed below. These festal antiphons replace 
the usual first antiphon, and are sung during the entire period listed in parentheses, including Sundays. Now, of course, as you notice, there is the exception of, of, of Palm Sunday, but that's explicitly stated there. So it gives you the post-festal period when those antiphons are sung. And when you get to the bottom of the page, we do something that, uh, again, for some reason, you know, it's amazing how um, it's not just professors who don't read. Uh, it's amazing how a lot of non-professors, a lot of ladies don't read because, you know, you get to the bottom of, of page 100 and there it says, proceed to page 104. And it's uh, astounding how often people for somehow, for some reason don't notice that, don't bother to read that. And so uh, you have them kind of flipping around trying to figure out what page you're on. If they just read the indication at the bottom of the page, they would know that they now have to go over to page 104. So um, those are the issues that um, I, I wanted to deal with with regards to, to um, th this question of a manageable uh, diversity. And um, next time in um, part seven, we'll get back to some of the more specific questions of, of musical setting, which I've already uh, discussed, but which I want to flesh out with uh, more concrete examples. So stay tuned. Glory to Jesus Christ. Slava Jesus Christo.